Father, we thank you. We worship you once again. I speak to every mountain in every life today. By the power that is in the name of Jesus, by the power that is in the word of God, I command you, mountain, to move. Yeah. I command you, mountain, to move. Yeah. I command you, you mountain, to shift asunder. Yeah. I command every spirit behind those mountains, give way right now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak peace into every situation. Amen. I speak peace into every life. Amen. I speak peace into every health. Amen. I speak peace into every family. Amen. Whatever it is that you have not been able to resolve, I speak peace into that situation. Amen. Let the wisdom to go around it and to overcome, receive that wisdom today. Amen. Receive the word of God today. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Jesus, let me pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you. Anointed voices, uh, the technical team, the instrumentalists, God bless you mightily. And uh, happy Thanksgiving. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, every second Monday in October is usually Thanksgiving in Canada. And we thank God for what God has done. It's like a harvest. Is a celebration of harvest and also a celebration of thanksgiving for what God has done in the previous in the previous year. Praise the name of the Lord. We started a series last week that we have titled "Speak, Lord, Speak, Lord," and um, we said uh, a few things. I'm going to quickly mention them that there are stages of hearing God, and we said there were at least seven stages based on our scripture which is first uh, Samuel chapter 3. And we said there is the first stage of people of hearing nothing. And Samuel, when he was still serving under the leadership of Eli in the temple, even though he was a child of God, we can see that he's a child of God, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, but he heard nothing. All right? And then we have the next stage of his life, uh, he heard when God called him, but he didn't know who was talking. So we said, hearing without knowing who is speaking. Many people hear, you know, they don't know. Sometimes, so, as something told me, who is the something? It's a person. Amen. And that person is God. So never say, something told me. It's God who is speaking. It's either God is speaking to you, the devil is speaking to you, or your human spirit is speaking to you. Praise the name of the Lord. And we also say that there is also a third stage, which is hearing without understanding or, or clarity. Mark 4, 12, we explain that also, that Jesus said they will, they will hear, but they will not understand. Okay, and then the fourth stage, fourth stage, we said hearing a strange voice. You will not hear a strange voice in Jesus' name. I mean, I don't know if you watch a lot of these um, reality shows, you see, somebody who is already in jail and then they are asking him questions what happened? Something just told me to go and shoot him. Something just told me to go and kill him. And then after killing, you don't know why. The person has not offended you. The person has not done anything wrong. Alright, it's a strange voice. You will not hear a strange voice in Jesus' name. And then the fifth thing we said, hearing through an intermediary. We saw how God spoke and the boy kept running to the priest, Eli. On three good occasions, and then on the fourth occasion, the man said, I think God must have been speaking to him. So somebody can hear through an intermediary, you know, uh, somebody can hear through another person, or it could through a music or whatever. Amen. So he said it could be through a preacher, a song, a psalm, something can minister to you through something. Amen. And the sixth one, you know, there could be hearing also, but not receiving. Somebody can hear and then cannot receive. There is a difference between hearing and receiving. You can hear. I can tell you one, two, three things now. And then you heard me, but you didn't receive it. And when you don't receive it, you go and carry out a contrary thing. Amen. And this happens a lot between husband and wife. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, the man is going this way. He's saying something. The wife is hearing another thing. And then there is a conflict. May you not hear something strange in Jesus' name. 
you will hear the word of God in Jesus' name. And the seventh one that we, where we stopped, we said, hearing clearly and audibly. Okay, hearing God. And then Samuel went and laid down again because the priest said, go and lie down again. Maybe it's God. And then the fourth time, God came again and God spoke. And the boy said, speak, Lord, for your servant hear it or listen it. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray that you will hear God clearly and you hear God audibly in Jesus' name. That is the major problem we have in the world today, hearing God. If you and I can hear God, your life would, can never be in crisis. You can never, I tell you. Okay? Even if God wanted you to go through a challenge, okay? Even if God wanted to, you to go through something that is uh, just to, I mean, some rough time for you to, to be better, even in the midst of it all, you will still see God speaking to you. Yes or no? David said, he said, even when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For who? For thou art with me. Thou art with me. His presence is always talking. God is always talking. Amen. It doesn't matter how difficult that problem is. God is always talking. Amen. May God continue to speak to you. In Jesus' name we pray. So today we will look at, now we say that God is talking, talking, talking. What does God want to say? We'll deal with that today. And next Sunday, by the grace of God, we'll talk about how to hear God. Please don't miss it. How to hear God next Sunday, we'll deal with that. Amen. So what does God want to say? Why does God want to speak? Why does God want to speak to you? Can't God just speak to the pastor or the prophet or whosoever and let the man come and speak to me? You see, it will be an anomaly all right, for a father to have children. And for him to talk to the children, he will look at the one that is closest to him to always going to, you know, we all do that when we're young. You see, the old ones are the bad guys in the house. Praise the Lord. You understand? And when they know they've done something bad and the parents are very angry and they need something, who do they push? The little one. They said it's the small one. The small one will go, Dad, we need 40 bucks. And the boy knows that he will get the 40 bucks. <laughs> so what do you need 40 bucks for? We need it. We need it. We need it. <laughs> and what do you need it for? Then he will run from daddy's room. What do we need the 40 bucks for? <laughs> and the young and the old world, the bad guys will say, ah, for pizza, pizza, pizza. <laughs> and then he goes back for pizza. Forty dollar worth of pizza? Do you know what you are talking about? Then he goes back to ask him. <laughs> then the father will know that <laughs> this is the voice of Jacob. <laughs> the screen <laughs> of Esau. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. I tell you sincerely, and I'm talking from my heart today, the Lord will speak peace to his people. Amen. The first thing God wants, God wants to assure you, peace. Amen. Amen. Psalm 85 verse 8, it says, what will the Lord speak? He said, the Lord will speak peace to his people. Amen. Jesus Confirm that word. He said, I will hear what God will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But don't allow, let them not turn again to foolishness. Amen. And Jesus came to buttress that fact in John 16, 33. He said, in the world, you will have tribulation. Brethren, is it not true? There is tribulation. I had a, a, a pathetic story of a young girl. You know, I don't know why I'm... Let me, maybe somebody may be encouraged. The girl, at a very young age, wonderful father, wonderful mother, wonderful family. At a very young age, the father died. And the f f mom could not cope. It was so devastating that she didn't have any choice than to get married to look for somebody to get married because if not, she was going to go mental. And then, got married to this man and they were living their lives and the man 
this stepman, very rich man, started to abuse eight year old girl. Abused her so much that the girl was tired. She wanted to leave the house. She wanted to say, if I tell my mom, my mom is a very temperamental person. She will quarrel with the man. And I know the man will chase my mom out. And if that happens, we are back to square one. And I don't want that to happen. So the guy was keeping it. She was keeping it until she was 15. It was terrible. She couldn't tell nobody. And then she, the only thing she could do was to move out of the house. To just get out of the house. And her friend said, oh, come, 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 come and stay with us. And then she moved to go and stay with She was so glad that at least this abuse will not continue. And then she got to her friend's house. She was happy. They welcomed her. But she noticed that these girls would go out and come back whenever they wanted. And they introduced her to hotel business. And that's how her life turned upside down. Until she now said no. This cannot continue. I thought I was running from, from fire, from fry pan. And then she ran into, let me tell you, brethren, a lot of things are going out, out happening outside there. The devil is micromanaging and stressing lives out of people. Christians, believers are not excluded from it. But I tell you today, the Lord will speak peace. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Maybe you cannot explain to anybody. You see, God is, in, whenever anything happens to you, God is aware. And God is feeling the heat. As small as this, this old body is, if you have a little pinch on your hand, when you want to have your bath, you don't you feel it? You feel it. Little, just little cut. The whole body will feel the pain. God is feeling your pain. And I pray, the Lord said, he will speak peace to you. He will speak peace to his people. So God wants to speak peace to you. So it doesn't matter what we're going through. And when God is speaking to you, don't, you know, sometimes the, 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 the heat is so much that even when God wants to speak, say, no, 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 I don't even want to hear that. Please let God speak to your heart. It is the word of God that can change the situation. It is the word of God that can calm down the situation. It is the word of God that can help you. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two thing, what does God want to say? Number two, the Lord will speak about your destiny, which is always in the future. And a lot of brethren are missing out from, of this. The Lord will wants to speak to you about your destiny. Have you ever sat down to say, Lord, yes, I'm here now. I'm in Canada. Or maybe you are in one country, you live somewhere. What it does my future hold? What am I going to do in the future? What is going to happen to me in the future? How will my life be in the future? Amen. Many people don't. We just want to walk. No. Life is much more. Jesus told the disciples and told the Pharisees, he said, life is much more than the daily food that we are running after. He said, can you see the lily? Can you see them? He said, they are so beautiful to behold. They don't do nothing, but God takes care of them. Amen. So please, brethren, you need to create a time, all right? And let God speak to you about your destiny, about your life. I was a young boy just trying to become an engineer years back. But I knew there's a future somewhere. I love engineering. Is it what I'm going to do? And I was doing intern. I remember very well. I can still take you to that office. Very early in the morning, I got to the office before 8. And as I sat down to pray, the Lord said, I'm going to make you a pastor. You're going to be a pastor in the future. I wrote it down. But that time, it didn't make any sense to me. It didn't make any sense at all. Praise the name of the Lord. Maybe I would have struggled if I didn't hear that. So I wrote it down. Maybe if it is God's will, let it happen. But I knew I heard it very well that early in the morning before 8 in the morning. Amen. The Lord wants to speak to you. 
You see, it will be a great disadvantage and a disservice to yourself. If God wants you to go in this direction, you refuse to listen to him, and you are now running at 200 kilometers per hour in, the wrong, in, the, in another direction. You will run and run and run, and you will never get to that destination. Praise the Lord. That's why I want to tell you, if it is to take one day off, take it off. If it is to take two days off, switch off your phone. Take it off from work. It's not going to destroy anything. It's not going to do I, I used to have, I think I've shared the testimony with, with you. I have my, he's my first cousin, but because of our age gap, I call him uncle. <laughs> How many of us are in that category? <laughs> I call him uncle. All right? Very nice guy. Very, very good guy. He's, uh, he also, he was one of the, one of the associate pastors of, at uh, Rema Chapel also. So one day we were sitting down. I think I was in my, I was in my, um, one year to graduate, yeah, in the university. So we sat down. I went to see him in his office. I was, he was talking about my project and all that. And then he said something. He said, I'm going, to, I want, I'm going to encourage you. When you grow up, have a business mindset. That time he was saying it, I didn't even understand what he was saying. He said he, he was a very successful geologist. And he said he had worked for many years in one particular organization. And then he was praying one day. The Lord said, resign. In fact, the wife said, lawyer. The wife is a lawyer. She said, you must, you must be out of your mind. And of course, if you, you know, lawyers are very good. The, they are the, what do you call them? The learned ones. I don't know why they call them the learned ones. All of us are learned. Praise God. <laughs> and then the woman lambasted him and said many things. But he knew he had God. So he, he took his letter and resigned. And the wife was not happy. They didn't talk for one week. But he said every morning he wake up in the morning, after the family devotion, he will sit on the dining table and he will just be there with his tea and any idea, whatever, whatever came Heart of his mind, his heart, he said, he wrote it down. Whether good, bad, or ugly, whether it was the devil that was speaking, he wrote everything down. <laughs> he wrote everything down. And he was there 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day. Every day. He would just sit down. Whatever comes to his mind, he would just write it down. He would just write it down. And then after one week, and that's what he said, he said, after one week, Monday to Friday, nothing happened. He was still writing. Of course, before he resigned, he had registered a company. And then the weekend, and then the second week. He wanted to do the same process again for the new week. As he sat in his office, a call came in. And what was the call? Uh, one man, he owned a very big company. He said, I wanted to, I came to your office last week. I didn't see you. They said you had resigned. Any problem? He said, no, sir. He said, there is a job we wanted to give your, the company. But we know that you are the one the company will have sent to execute it. So we decided we are not going through that route. We are going to do it directly with you. Do you have, do you have a registered company? He said, yes, I have, a, I have a company that I've registered. Do you have a bank account? No, I don't have. Okay, can you, register, can you quickly open one? So he went there to look at the scope of work, and he signed the contract that Monday. And he looked at me in the face. He said, Timothy, this first job, if I don't work again, he must have been like 40 years old then. He said, if I don't do any job again for life, I have what will feed me for life. One job. <laughs> one job. First job. Praise the Lord. Now, if this man did not hear God, do you know that he could walk for the next 25 years like that? Running from pillar to post without knowing God's plan for his life. And when he came back home and the wife came back from work, he tendered the contract document to the wife. 
The wife broke down and started to cry. Say, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know. Praise the name of the Lord. God wants to speak to you. Genesis 12, 1, 2, and 3. Abraham was just doing his own thing. And God, I believe God must have been speaking to many people in that city. It was only Abraham who connected with God. And God said, my friend, get thee out of your father's house, out of your kindred, out of your country, to a place I'm going to show you. The man didn't even know what, I'm sure he didn't understand what God was, but he knew it, it was God. You don't need to understand. When God is speaking to you, just comply. Praise the Lord, because God knows the future. Amen. What do we talk about Abraham today? Great man. What do we talk about Abraham today? Big man. Maybe the richest man. Maybe proud to Solomon. Maybe the greatest man that ever lived. All the religious bodies affiliated to who? Abraham. All the nations affiliated to who? The blessings of Jesus Christ is affiliated to who? Abraham. Everything. Why? Because one man heard. You see, when I tell people, the moment you can hear God, you see, 95% of the things you will have been running after will be taken away from you. Praise the Lord. So please, sit down. We are too much. You see, the internet and, you see, and the system, the, the first world system is not helpful. Some of you, you, you know, you can hear God, you can pray, you can do things before. Then you came into a first world country and you too, you joined the rat race. And the, the only thing you'll be looking, checking on the board is people, over time, slot for over time. <laughs> slot for over time. I did it when I came to Canada too. I, I mean, I used to, for people that are close to me, me too, I did it. In fact, that was a time I stopped going to digging deep. That time we were doing systems integration for CIBC all over Canada. So I was one of the team leaders. You know, and they, of course, the company rented cars for us that time during that pro pro project. It was supposed to be like a one-year project. Ah, Wednesday, once we close, we just, from 4 p.m., from 5 p.m., we go. We walk sometimes till 1 a.m. I would look at my, my pay slip, even though the tax was almost double, but I was happy. Until one day, I will not go for Bible study. I will not go for faith clinic. And then one day, one girl, Indian girl, one of the girls I used to preach to in the office, just came to meet my, my, pro, my project, my program manager. Say, Baba, that's his name. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a Jamaican guy. Say, Baba, please remove my name from this project. And I was there. I said, why, 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 what's the problem? I've been missing Bible study. I'm telling you, Roman Catholic girl, Indian girl. Say, I've been missing Bible study and I'm not happy. And I don't want to miss it again. I say, Baba, me, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm, true life story. <laughs> that was the last day I, I went. This girl, there is no assurance that if she dies today, she'll go to heaven. That day, Baba, please take your job. <laughs> and that was it. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank God that God used that girl to minister to me that day. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three, what will God speak? What will God speak? God will speak his plan for you. His plan for you. His plan for your family. His plan for the nation. His plan for the entire world. God will speak to you. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil and not thoughts of evil to give you life and an expected end. Another version says to give you a future and a hope. God has big plans for you. Can you see? God could not speak to Eli. If you look at that first Samuel chapter 3, 11 and 12, God could not speak to Eli because his ears have become dull. God had to speak to a little boy. What God was going to do in the life of the priest, God spoke 
to the boy. <laughs> God said, I thought I was going to keep your priesthood forever. But because of what you did, Eli did not commit any sin. Hello? It was the children who, commit, who were committing sin. And he refused to correct them. And God spoke to him that your boy, your children are doing bad in the temple. Can you? And he said, and he kept quiet. And at a point he said, whatever God wants to do, let him do. Hmm. Wow. God said, I kill and I make alive. And you are telling the same God to do whatever he wants to do. So God stopped talking to him and God had to go and speak to a boy. And God was talking to the boy, not just about his own life. God was talking about the house of Eli. And God was talking about the nation of Israel to a small boy. God can speak to you about our nation, Canada. God can speak to you about Costa Rica. God can speak to you about Ghana, about Cameroon. God can speak to you about Nigeria. God can speak to you. Amen. You see, woe unto any man. I wrote it there. It's a clause. But please permit me for using that word. Woe unto any man or woman who cannot hear God or know God's will in marriage. Woe unto any man who cannot hear God concerning ministry, concerning direction, concerning decision making. Amen. You see, I tell people, one of the greatest decisions that you make in life is on the issue of marriage. The moment you get it wrong, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. But I can tell you, I can open my phone and read and read some shocking text messages to you. On the issue, on the, on the issue of marriage, I can, I, can, I can read it to you. Oh, don't go in this direction. Wait. Wait. No, 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 no. Praise the Lord. God wants to speak to you about your family. <clears throat> God wants to speak to you. Number four, God also wants to speak to you about secrets of success in life. There are secrets of success in life. There are secrets, I tell you. There are secrets. You see, it is not the number of hours you work that matters, I tell you. It is working smart. Knowing the secret. There are secrets, I tell you. And it is in the place of hearing God that these secrets. Why do people go to make sacrifices to make money? That's their own secrets. But because we serve a living God, a God who is all-knowing, who knows everything, amen. Why did Jabez... Jabez just got frustrated one day. I said, God, you have to change something. It was a reproach. In fact, the boy was, he had a very bad image. And the boy went to God. He said, you have to do, you just have to do it. You see, until God sees your desperation, until God sees you, you just say, I'm going to sit here. I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm not going to pick any call. I'm not going to do nothing. I just want you to speak. The first word that God will speak to you, once you go in that direction, you'll be surprised. The things you have done and done, 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 done before that never worked, you see it working. Amen. God wants to share with you the secrets of success in life. There are secrets. There are deep things. And you will hear it and get it in Jesus' name. Let me just rush. The Lord also wants to speak to you about how to improve your character and your relationship with him. God wants to talk to you about your character. And, and how can somebody get born again and he, the way he talked before he got born again has not changed. He can still curse. He can still abuse. All right? He can still say whatever comes out of his mouth without thinking, without blinking. I mean, some, not something has, I mean, nothing has changed. James 4, 8, James 4, 8, it says, draw nearer to God, and God will draw nearer to you. Can you see? So you are the one that will make the move. You see, God doesn't lose anything if anybody goes to hell. 
I don't think so. He died for us. He died for everybody equally. He did everything that needed to be done. So if you make up your mind, I don't want, I don't need this God. God will leave you. Amen. Draw who? Draw near to God first. And he will draw near to you. Say, cleanse your hand. It's not God that's going to cleanse you. You are the one that will cleanse your hand. The thing that the things you are holding that you shouldn't hold, you need to drop them. Amen. My pastor used to say that, how can you steal pillow and you will not have bad dream? You will have bad dream. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You must make the move. So God wants to talk to you about your character. Amen. You know, I was, I was amazed one time when the general was here, was saying that he, God told him, and he saw something. What did he see about himself? He saw himself, he saw maggots all around him. And God said, you are doing something that is not right. He said, wow, that was a changer in his life. Praise the Lord. At that level. God can speak to you. God can speak to you. I can tell you correction upon correction upon correction upon correction upon correction. Amen. And I open my heart to God, please. This thing I want to do is it. You know, I used to share with us. God told me one day, he said, any money I don't give you, if your hand touches it, you are a dead man. Praise the Lord. So if I see, if somebody now flies money and put it by mistake on my table, what do you think I will do? I will run. I will run. <laughs> because it is fire. <laughs> it is fire. Praise the Lord. So please draw near to God and he will draw near. Cleanse your hands. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Psalm 24 verse 4. Praise the Lord. Let me quickly run. Number six, you see, the Lord will not just say all those beautiful things. The Lord will also speak warning to you. He will speak warning to you. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, 16, 17, 18, and 19. But let's just pick verse 17. He says, the Lord was looking at Ephraim. Ephraim that has been blessed by God. The one that has been preferred. You know, it takes grace for God to, to look or to substitute, you know, from nowhere you shouldn't be blessed and God blessed you and then God has helped you. You have become a nation. You have prospered. You have enlarged. And then you now began to go after idolatry. And you began to, I mean, when a pastor, one pastor was sharing his testimony, how God delivered him from from occultic, occultism and, um, and uh, what do you call it, With um, he was doing, he wanted the church to grow and he wanted to make money, he wanted to become a famous pastor. All right? And he went to meet them somewhere. How can a pastor go to meet occultic people to do something for him, to do the work of God? That is an anomaly. It's very abnormal. And they did it for him. He said, he said, I'm telling you, I'm not the only pastor. We are plenty there. Say all these pastors that you see parading themselves, he said, fear them. I will not mention them, but fear them. Amen. He said, he said, he was there when they did for one person, one pastor. And they brought a chicken. Brought a chicken. And when they brought the chicken, they said, this chicken is going to, and they brought some grains of uh, corn. Put them, plenty of them on the floor. He said, this chicken is going to eat some corn here. If, he, if this chicken eats 50, we are going to live 50 more years on earth. If this chicken eats only one, you will live one year. Do you understand? Yes. Will you do? Yes. And the chicken came. One, two, three, four. And the man started praying in tongues that the chicken will eat <laughs> Abomination. And the chicken ate four. And the chicken went back. And they took the chicken, <laughs> cooked the chicken, and said, you must not eat the bones. 
So the man ate the chicken without the bone, so they buried the bone. And they said, your destiny is already buried. Four years, not more than four years. Praise the Lord. Ephraim is joined to idols. You see, when God says, let him alone, you know what it means? He's on his own. You know, when Paul said, I've left him for the devil to deal with, when God removes his hands, that's it, that's the end. God will not remove his hand concerning you <laughs> in the name of Jesus. So God will not just speak peace sometime. He will speak peace, but in the area of warning, God will, need, God will warn you. Please, I beg you, if God is warning you, you see, a lot of us will take decisions based on just what is, what is around, physical. Meanwhile, God wants to speak to you. God wants to speak to you. That route you are taking, God wants to speak to you. God wants to re redirect you. It may sound foolish initially, but if you comply with God, you'll be surprised at the end, end of it. And lastly, God wants to speak prophecies to you. Prophecies are not just about the future, but also past that you've missed and also the present. Can you please display as I round up Revelations chapter 1? We'll continue next week on how to hear God. Revelations 1. Let's read from 17 quickly. Revelations 1, 17, 18, and 19. Okay, let me just quickly. Okay, thank, thank you. And when I saw him, this was John talking about his encounter with the Lord. I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. That's Jesus talking to John, verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. 19. Can you see? Can we read it together? Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be. Yeah. Prophecies. The past, which you have seen, the things which are present, and the things which shall be hereafter. Now, if you take that into the book of Revelations, he saw some things about the throne of heaven. Those are the things which he saw. And then, the things which are the present state of the church, the seven churches. Amen? Amen? Those are the present things. And then the things which shall be hereafter. Revelations chapter 6 to Revelations chapter 22. Praise the Lord. God wants to speak prophecies. Amen. You don't have to be there. God can show you what has happened in your family before. Amen. I've shared with you before. There's nothing for me to hide. My older sister, we are only two in my family. My older sister. I, was, I didn't even know. I was still, I think I was... Um, I was, I was in Port Harcourt then. And then, I didn't even know she was pregnant. The Lord just showed me. And she was pregnant, very, really pregnant. I said, what kind of thing is this? And I saw somebody trying to cover his face, brought a shotgun, and shot the tummy. Boom! And she fell. I woke up. I interceded for her. Ah, what could this be? Father, this lady should not die. I prayed, and I, God said, it is done. And, and that was it. It was not long. I had a conference in the city where she was living. So I told her to come and meet me at the venue of the conference because I was very busy. I was one of the coordinators. And then she came. The driver brought her. And she was smiling. I saw the tummy. And then she said, oh, I just had a baby. So I went and looked at the baby in the car. I said, what? You had a baby? Praise God. I said, I knew about it. She was looking at me. And then she said, ah, but I've been sick, but I can't stand too long. I said, what happened? Then she took me by the car, by the side of the, so that the driver would not, and she opened her tongue. I said, blood of Jesus. I said, that was what God showed me. This woman will have died. Praise the Lord. Let's bow down our head. She's alive today. She marked her 60th birthday some days ago. Let's just appreciate God. Let's give God all the glory. Let's give God the honor. Let's give God adoration. He's the almighty God. 
The Lord wants to speak peace to you. The Lord wants to minister to you. The Lord wants to the Lord wants to help you. The Lord also wants to warn you. The Lord wants to do a new thing in your life. 